astronomy will you write your report on, Harvey? Too many. Coming too fast. Come on, stay focused. To save Earth. Ground control the major hard. Come in, Captain Hinkle. What? Huh? Nuts. I was about to get to level two. I only had the leader of the Zenuvian battle saucers to plasma blast. Ah, plasma blasting Zenubians. There's a skill, Harv. May as well skip junior high and sign right up for Space Fleet Command. Uh, sorry. Did you say something, Earthling? Uh, uh Sabrina? Yes, so great, Bus Vader. I was wondering what you're going to base your astronomy paper on. Well, Spellman, I know what I'm going to base my paper on. How Virgos, which includes moi and Scorpios, make a perfecto love match. Why, you're a Scorpio, aren't you, Harvey? Horoscopes are astrology gem, not astronomy. We're not studying birth signs, we're studying stars. You know my Uncle Quigley's doing research at the observatory. You should drop by and say hello, okay, Harv? Harv? <sighs> hmm, either my backpack's alive or the mayo in my tuna sandwich was way past its expiration date. Um, I, I guess saying I'm sorry isn't going to give you back that tuna sandwich. <clears throat> I just remember uh, stumbling into this backpack. I recall a chewing sound, then, well, the rest tragically is uh, blank. Yeah, a blankety blank cat whose breath sure smells fishy. Just stay out of sight till the field trip is over, Salem. My sandwich! How could you? Isn't that cute? Spellman's talking to a sandwich. It must be full of baloney. Just like Sabrina. <laughs> is a recreation of how the surface of the moon appeared to the Apollo 11 astronauts. The first humans to leave footprints in the lunar dust. First humans is right. In my day, we just called the moon planet kitty litter. We left behind more than footprints, believe me. Way too much information, Salem. Wow, isn't the observatory fascinating, Harv? Uh, Harv? Galaxy Savior, thy name is Kinkle. <laughs> Here, let me open another can of whoop asteroid for you, space bean. Harvey's missing this whole cool tour of the observatory because of that stupid game. Hey, what the, can't stop now? No, can't stop now, must save Earth. Looks like your batteries wore out. Huh? What? The batteries? Where are we? Our school field trip, remember? You should join us here on Planet Reality. Here, I'll hold this till we find some more batteries, okay? Ow, I'm napping in here. The batteries? Yes, Sabrina, friend, like to pet ponies. Are you okay, Harv? Sure, never, but better. M mommy, hello? Hello? Sorry I was so nutty back there, Sabrina. My dad calls it the face. It's my game face. When I play my gadget guy, it's like I can't think of anything but what I'm concentrating on. I guess I kind of lose it. Yeah, well, now that you've found it again, let's drop it on Uncle Quig. <clears throat> Look, Harvey, we're here. And Uncle Quigley is down in section... section... uh... Sheesh, Uncle Quigley's office is deeper than a monologue on Dawson's Creek. Come on. Ah, hello, Harvey. Sabrina. Welcome to my top secret project. What exactly is your project, Uncle Quigley? The search for outer space intelligent thingies. I'm beaming a message of Earth greetings to deep space and hoping for a response. I am Quigley of planet Earth. Greetings. This message may take over 100 light years to reach your planet. Hopefully, we foolish humans won't destroy our own planet by then. Please feel free to respond. So you're like an intergalactic talk show host. Cool, Uncle Quig. Don't forget to be arrogant and rude to callers. Talk radio audiences expect that. Yeah, I'm afraid K. Quig's phone lines haven't exactly been burning up the switchboards, Harvey. No collect calls from Mars, huh? Afraid not. Sometimes I fear I'm becoming a laughing stock in the scientific community. Don't be ridiculous, Uncle Quigley. Professor Quigley, there's a call on line one. It's some members of the scientific community. Oh. <clears throat> um. Hello. <laughs> Well, you'll never be laughing stock in my eyes. Well, we better get back to our school tour. Hang in there, Uncle Quig. I'm sure everything will work out. See you back at home. <laughs> Poor Uncle Quigley. I've never seen him look so depressed. The respect of his peers means a lot to him. Don't sweat it, Sabrina. Everybody likes your Uncle Quigley. You know that. Yeah, of course they do. Quigley, Quigley, Quigley. I tell you, I don't like that man. I want him fired. I'm not leaving the observatory until he's thrown out. If word of Professor Quigley's preposterous experiment leaked out of this observatory, well, we'd be laughed out of the scientific community right along with him. I think you're being harsh, Thaddeus. I happen to like Professor Quigley, and I really think he believes in his experiment. This institution has to shut Quigley down. <gasps> All right, all right. I'll give Quigley 24 hours. If he doesn't get a response from space, I'll shut down his program and divert his funds. 
to you and your research. <laughs> you won't regret it, sir. <laughs> Studying the effects of restrictive clothing on defenseless little lab animals must be explored. And that kind of research does not come cheap. This is horrible. We've got to do something. We can call off the search. They're right here, Mrs. Drone on and on. Try to stay with the group, Harvey and Sabrina. I don't want Jem to have to blow that whistle again. I hate that whistle. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Uncle Thaddeus Stone. Jem Stone, my favorite niece. I knew there was something about that guy. Why, Uncle Thad, you big silly? What are you up to? Oh, just removing some excess baggage around the observatory, i.e. firing some hacks. <laughs> All in a day's work. Great. Can you fire some of my teachers? Oh, <laughs> that's my girl. A true stone. <laughs> just point. I'll, I'll make some calls. My Uncle Quigley is not excess baggage. If only Uncle Quig could get a response from space, he'd show that guy. If only there was a way I could... You could? Hold on, Sabrina. I may be only newly 13, but I have wisdom beyond my years. Or so I was told by the palm reader I handed over my last 10 bucks to. You were going somewhere with this, Harvey? Oh, uh, your Uncle Quigley's a grown man. He should stand or fall on his own. Meddling in other people's business might not be such a good idea, no matter how much you love him. Sheesh. <laughs> Sounds like dialogue directly lifted from the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You're right, Harv. I was just thinking out loud. <laughs> uh, will you excuse me a second, Harvey? I think I left my, uh, wallet back on the rings of Saturn. Sure, Sabs. I'll meet you in the planetarium. All right, Salem. We gotta help Uncle Quig. You know it, I know it. We? Yes, we. You ate my lunch, I was hungry, I love tuna, you owe me. Look, it's none of our business. This from a cat whose motto is, if it ain't broke, break it? That is my motto, isn't it? Okay, so what's cooking in that little blonde head? Simple. A little magic help. If we can create an alien response, well, Quig will show everyone. Ah, the old artificial alien response spell. Is it that time of year again? Boy, you can set your watch by it. We gotta hurry. Quig's coffee break is almost over. What are you doing, anyway? I'm on hold with the spooky jar. The spooky jar has a phone? Your call is important to us. We are currently assisting other witches. Please hold on, and a representative will cast a spell short. Huh? Sheesh! I had no idea a ceramic jar could be so busy. Make the music stop! If you don't like the tunes, don't dial the number for ball. <laughs> no, love the tunes. So can you help us? Really? Okay, go ahead. Got it. Sounds easy enough. Great. Thanks. <laughs> love you, too. The spooky jar said love ya? Nah, I just say love you, too, because I know it bugs him. Anyway, here's what we do. We say this spell over Quig's computer, and an alien life form will appear for 24 hours as if it's making its way to Earth long enough for Quig to keep his job. Then it'll vanish. We just got to supply an alien. Supply a what? An alien. An example of what you want these space critters to look like. A picture or something. How would I know what an alien is supposed to look like? I... Hey, wait a minute. This is what aliens look like. Okay, here goes. By Isaac Newton and Einstein's theory, for 24 hours, this illusion will clearly fool those on Earth who see this sight, think it's real for just one night. But beware the twist if you deceive, when one day you find you too believe. Cool. Weedle Gemstone's uncle sees this. Come on, we gotta catch the bus. Oops. I am Quigley of planet Earth. <laughs> Others like me. Take over. Your planet. Destroy. Respond. I guess this quickly earth fool doesn't know who he's messing with, do he? Look at him there, threatening us, intimidating us with his space army, backing us against the wall. It's pitiful. Well, he can save his breath. We are whippy lines, and you all know what we're going to do. What our proud civilization has always done for a sinky crop loose. When threatened by outside invaders, when the evil gets in our face, when we get pushed too far, we're going to... Shut up! That's right. There's no way we're going to tangle with the ugly, scary-looking, crazy old earth fool like that thing. We'll give it up. Yeah. 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 Let's roll over. Let's roll over. Helm's thingy. So they cross through this quickly on this earth planet. Aye, aye, Captain. First mate, Hairball 6. 
Start building a white flag, a big one, and prepare the gift baskets. Aye, Captain. Cheese wedge, too. Hand me my inflatable donut. We've got a long journey ahead, and my Gleeks and Abelines are killing me. We're off to give up. Yeah! Yeah! Hey. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess maybe the aliens got lost on their way to Earth. Oh, well, at least Professor Quigley made contact, just like he said he would. Long live Quigley! Long live Quigley! Boy, did this ever work like a charm. I wonder if Jem's uncle is enjoying the crow he's eating. I know I always do. We'd better get dressed. I want to look my best when Quig is handed the International Science Prize. I'll get it. <laughs> It's you. I thought it was going to be more of those pesky news people wanting to interview my internationally renowned Uncle Quig. Well, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about. I wonder if I could talk to you, uh, alone? Sabrina, it's about your uncle and finding those aliens. Isn't it great? Uncle Quig's on top of the world. I've seen the footage of the approaching aliens, and they sure look an awful lot like the Zenuvians on my gadget guy. Sabrina, did you meddle in your uncle's experiment? Meddle's a strong word, Harv. I prefer the word help. I knew it. I just couldn't bear to see Gemstone's uncle take Quigley's finding a way to use it for his own stupid experiments. It would have broken Quigley's heart. But don't you see? The whole thing's a big lie. You're going to end up hurting Quig more than helping him. i never do that, Harv. Look, by this time tomorrow, I feel very strongly this whole thing will blow over. Trust me. Hmm. This time, Spellman, your little web of lies is as tangled as a... As a... As a... A really tangled thing. <laughs> Three words. Pink dog sweater. <laughs> oh, Uncle Thad, you will be getting me an enormous birthday present this year. Just wait till you hear what I have to tell you. I am proud to give the Global Science Prize to a colleague who makes us all proud. Professor Quigley's determination, intelligence, and dedication to scientific endeavors can only be matched by... His blatant trickery. You want to know where Quigley's mysterious aliens originated from? Uh, I'll show you. Huh? Oh. That's right. Professor Quigley is a fraud. <laughs> That was the most humiliating thing that's ever happened to me. Obviously, you've never been pantsed at a kitschy wear party. Salem and I feel horrible, Uncle Quig. We were just trying to help because we believe in you. If you truly believed in me, you wouldn't have meddled in my affairs. I feel terrible. How could you ever let me do such a stupid thing? Me? My paws were tied. I tried to talk you out of it, Ricky. Oops. <laughs> Mortal, three o'clock and approaching. Harvey? Just thought maybe your uncle could use a hand. This is partially my fault. I never should have taken my eyes off you when those wheels in your head started spinning. Unlike the rest of humanity, I still believe in you, Uncle Quigley. Thanks, Harvey, but don't waste your time. My experiment was silly. Aliens? Bah, right. Oh. Shipper Quig just won the Publisher's Clearinghouse Prize. Whoa, Sabrina, these aliens made the cat talk. Freak me. Hello, old great Quigley. We are here to surrender to you. And to take you back to our planet to rule over us. Rule over you? We got your message loud and clear. I am Quigley of planet Earth. I see others like me. Take over your planet. Destroy this one. When we spilled the coffee onto Quigley's computer, remember all the sparks and stuff? You what? As you can see, there's no need to destroy our planet. We give up. B -b but I don't want to be your leader. Th there's been a mistake. I, I sent a greeting, not a threat. Well, we can't dally over details. We surrender anyway. Now let's get going. Now sit down and relax. We got a block so freeze you. Block so freeze? At least this proves my theory. There is real intelligent life out there. We surrender. That's what we do. We are whipping lines. We're scared. It's true. I think intelligent life may be a slight exaggeration. Pierre, Blotso, freeze them! Sabrina, after this trip, you are so grounded. I only hope their planet has Tina. Gee, Sabrina, it's too bad we'll never see Earth again. With this talking cat, we could build a whole TV show around him. <laughs> like I'd ever sell out. What was that? We 
you're under attack. Squishy thing, put the attackers on the main screen. Good galaxies, it's the evil Zenuvians whose only goal is to turn Earth into a ball of burnt mud. Salem, what's happening? I guess we misunderstood the end of that spell, the part that says, beware the twist if you deceive, when one day you find you too believe. And what does that mean? Oops, I'm afraid we brought those Earth-killing aliens to life. Oops, we're responsible for destroying Earth? Quickly, load the gift basket torpedo tubes. We have to make these creatures like us so we can surrender to them. Try one, try two. They're not accepting our offering of surrender. No, you can't give up. You don't know these Anubians. Sure, they're just electronic imagery, but they will stop at nothing. Once they destroy us, they'll destroy Earth. They must be stopped. Well, what do we do? We have no weapons. We can short them out, one by one, with water. Quickly, fill all these balloons with two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. Oui, just don't raise your voice at me. I'm fragile. Speaking of water... Load them in those surrendered gift tubes. We're going to water balloon those video villains back into the Big Bang Theory. level use the face hobby use the face the face of course my game face must wait 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 now As you can see, the dog is uncomfortable. Now, with the funds diverted from that fraud Quigley to my research, one day we'll understand why. Why? Ow, my spine. Harv, you did it. You saved us. You saved the world. Oh, great, Quigley. How can we ever repay you? I'm sure we just all like to go home. All right. We got to find more balloons. Let's take over some weaker planets. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Huh? Sabrina? What happened? You, uh, were p playing your game guy. You had your face on so intense. Nothing could stop you. And then, well, you saved the world, Harvey. I did it. I finally did it. I've been trying to reach this level all my life. Whoa, it seems so real. Can you believe it, Sabrina? I saved the world. You, you have, have no, no idea, idea, Harvey. Harvey. Now, onward to level two. Prepare to meet my plasma blasters, Anubian Scourge. You go, Harv. You know, I had the weirdest dream about your cat. Da 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 da